Welcome to Terra at Home with your host, Chris Moretti. Good morning and welcome to Terra at Home. September is the perfect time to plant, and this morning we're joined by Laura Bittner, the Terra Landscape Coach, for some great tips on adding interest to your landscape throughout the summer, into the fall, and then into the winter. So Laura, we're approaching the, the very last days of summer now. Yes, we are. Which is kind of unfortunate, but fall is a wonderful time to plant, and it's time to really start thinking about ways to make your landscape look great, even when everything else goes away. Definitely, yes, and evergreens are a perfect way to do that. You know, having something that will give you some style, form, color, and texture during the bland months of winter always just helps to brighten up the front or back part of your home. So we've been talking about uh, this is a fantastic time to plant with warm soil temperatures, more reliable precipitation. It's a great time to make some new additions into your landscape. Yes. And when we talk about evergreens, they're not just green. No, not at all. Of course not. No, there are so many different types. You know, the word evergreen, I think, really puts kind of a, a stigma on, on the whole wide selection, different colors and shapes and sizes and, and some really special things that are, are kind of uncommon. So we've got a few out here that uh, maybe the people who previously said evergreens aren't for me, I don't like evergreens, maybe we'll change your mind this morning. What have we yes. got here? So here we have a blue star juniper, which you can see is blue in color. Its foliage is, is very different than that of a regular juniper, where it, it almost looks like twinkling stars. So it gets to be about at its mature height, four feet tall and four feet wide. It's just kind of mounded, nice and compact, and it really is a great addition for a little bit of an anchor, kind of on your lower level as we always talk about different heights varying the heights in a garden and this is great for kind of a low to mid section for that. Perfect for a foundation or middle of the border where it's going to provide some real structure and interest once again even when all the perennials and the deciduous shrubs have kind of gone to sleep. Yeah exactly. We've got another great example of a unique color and a really fun texture in this next plant as well. Yes this is a false cypress and this is the gold, sun gold. Uh, false cypress. So you can see that its foliage is, is, is different in the way where it's, it's very thin and wispy. Red leaf is, is what it's called. So beautiful kind of lime green, yellow foliage all through all four seasons and it really kind of just, I'm going to say, almost falls over itself as it kind of fountains out. It, it's really, again, another beautiful addition for kind of the low to mid size of your landscape. Away from the more typical evergreens, where these are still sort of needles and that sort of thing, yeah. you've got this whole group of broadleaf evergreens. Yes. Now, these are plants that keep their leaves all season long, all through the winter, but they're not typical in that they're not needles or foliage like cedar or like juniper. This is stuff that looks like leaves that stick around. Right. You would expect it to, to be a skeleton in the winter, but these guys aren't. So here we have a, a holly, which, again, just beautiful green foliage throughout the growing season, winter included. Now, kind of in this time of year, we get these little berries, which will turn red and add even more through the winter to the landscape. And not only that, it attracts birds and helps feed the birds through the winter as well. I love having holly in the landscape, um, even just to use as cuttings for the Christmas season, yes. to have them around to be able to clip little bouquets or, or boughs of them and use indoors for the holiday season is wonderful. Yep. Uh, or, of course, you can leave them out in the landscape to really add some beautiful interest throughout the winter. Yeah, months. you know, fresh holly on as a garnish on, on a meal plate is really quite nice during the Christmas season. There's a plan. I know it's still early for that. But. <laughs> We've also got this one right here. Now this is a, a little bit of a twist on a classic mm -hmm. favorite. Boxwood is often, you know, well thought of when we think of evergreens and low evergreens in the landscape, but this is a variegated variety. Yes, variegated. So you can see that it has the kind of creamy color uh, along with the green, but it almost has a, a blue tinge to it as well. Yeah. Great on its own. Great to use to form a hedge. Often boxwood is kind of the go-to plant for forming a nice hedge. What which, a unique one with variegated foliage. Though. Exactly. And, and you know, in my coaching, a lot of times people think, ah, oh, I don't want a hedge. But hedges are great for masking foundation lines of homes 
as well as just providing a green backdrop all four seasons. Or a variegated backdrop, you as the it. case may be. You got it. We've got a great focal plant in this mm -hmm. next one. This is a yucca. Yes. Uh, that is, once again, got really bright variegation. So we've got this uh, beautiful striping. Um, and this is something that's really going to stand out throughout the fall and into the winter. Yeah, and it really is one that you would not expect to be an evergreen. It looks tropical. It does. It looks tropical, but it lasts all through the winter. Again, just adding some different form and texture to the landscape, but also color all through the seasons. And with you know, something like an ornamental grass that turns brown throughout the winter, this won't. And you don't have to cut it back in the, in the springtime. It just kind of does its thing all year through. It's a good one. Let's move back to some more slightly traditional evergreens here in, in the different type of cypress that I yes. know are very near and dear to your heart. Yes, I love the Hinoki false cypress. I find its foliage. So here we have two. This is the dwarf Hinoki false cypress and the slender Hinoki false cypress. You can see that its foliage is kind of furled and just layered upon itself. It has and almost a feathery quality. It does, yeah, and it stays this beautiful kind of emerald green all through four seasons. The dwarf Hinoki gets about four feet tall and just it really just mounds and it can create quite a nice focal piece. The slender Hinoki false cypress gets to be about 12 to 15 feet tall at its mature height. It's slow growing and about five feet wide. So it's great kind of as an anchor, as a, a taller specimen for let's say the side of the house creating the garden and anchoring it on the side but oh I love it. I love the uniqueness of the foliage and unlike many other green other evergreens it's really soft. Really so soft. So it's nice to the touch and it's got a beautiful fragrance not yes. unlike cedar um, yep. but it's something a little bit different with of course that fabulous texture that people will stop and say What's up with that? Exactly. That's so amazing. And then you pair that with something like the gold threadleaf false cypress that we saw already, and it just makes a stunning combination. We've got one last plant here mm. in, uh, in evergreens, which I think is something really special. Uh, this is a, a topiary. It's a pom-pom. Yeah. This particular one, uh, I think, is a juniper. Yes. yes. But uh, you can find pom-poms in all sorts of different varieties, whether they be boxwood or pine or juniper, in this case, cedar, um, and they're fun, unique, funky focal points for any landscape. Definitely, definitely. Topiaries, obviously, as you can see, need some trimming. So even this one here um, needs a bit of shaping. So probably once, maybe twice a year, you need to trim it to keep it in its in its correct form. Right. Um, but it's not a lot of work. It doesn't have to take a lot of time to do that. And if you, if you keep on top of it, you're not going to lose that shape but they are, they're very interesting and they come in all different varieties of evergreens, as you said, junipers, boxwood, uh, Alberta spruce can be used as a twirly And what a spiral. unique and fun addition through yeah. the winter with a little snow cap on here and he's gonna look just Maybe effective. a few lights in there as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Laura, thank you so much for the great ideas. My pleasure. Of course, once again, it's a fabulous time to plant, so start thinking about your winter landscape as we move into the fall and we're all in good shape. Yeah. Stay with us for more great tips from Tara at home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. When we first bought the house, the lawn was nothing but brown. So I called my father-in-law. You know, he's really good with the lawn. He knows exactly what to do. Well, I told him, you're Scott's turf builder. He said, well, I got this other stuff. And I told him, take it back to the store. But some brands have filler, like sand and gravel, stuff you don't want on your lawn. Scott's turf builder is pure food. Every granule is 100% nutrition. You get what you pay for every time. You see what happens, Tim, when you listen to your father-in-law? <laughs> All food, no filler. That's the Scots Advantage. Welcome back to Tara at Home, where we're now on location at Carl Luke Orchards in Ancaster. I'm joined by Allison Workman. Thank you so much for being with us, oh, Allison. Oh, you're welcome. 
What a beautiful day and a beautiful place. The orchard is alive with buzzing of bees and apples on the trees. It's a fantastic place to be. Can you tell us a little bit about where we are, Carluke Orchards? Well, right now you're in Ancaster. Um, our orchard houses 26 different varieties of apples. Um, we're just getting started with our season. Yeah. Um, apple season starts in September 15th every year. And there's lots of different things for families and kids to do. So 26 varieties of apples. I mean, what a what a staggering number. Mm -hmm. You go shopping at the grocery store, generally speaking, you'll see maybe five, six varieties of apples. What a great opportunity to meet all these different varieties. It is. Uh, there's been a great big shift in the type of apples that people are interested in now. We saw a big um, shift from Red Delicious to apples like John and Gold and Honeycrisp and Empire and Macintosh, of course, is always an apple of choice. Yeah, lots of specialty apples. Uh, you mentioned Honeycrisp, which is one of my favorites, and it's a it's a big popular one. But yeah, there are all these great varieties with different flavors that you're able to come out and discover. Obviously, picking your own apples is a big thing here at Car Luke. When does pick your own start? Around the beginning of the season? It does. So around September 15th, we'll start pick your own. Um, it's a great time for families and kids. We have a lot of things going on in the weekends, so you can bring out your entire family, and you can come and pick different varieties of apples. You have a chance to go on a wagon ride on the weekends and through the orchard and the kids just love it. Um, there's also a little bit of a playground for the kids and you can buy some things inside at the bakery and sit out on the picnic tables and enjoy the atmosphere. It's fantastic. Wagon rides I'm sure are extremely popular. I mean <laughs> a, lo a lot of our kids live in the city and in suburbs and you don't get a lot of a chance to ride on, a, on the back of a tractor with hay bales and everything there so that must be a huge hit. It is. It's great. The children have a wonderful time. They're just, they treat it like a roller coaster almost. <laughs> and they love to sit on the tractor and see the tractor and just see what's in the country. Uh, speaking of in the country, this is obviously a really beautiful place to be. It's a great mm -hmm. place to come and bring your family and experience picking apples off the trees to eat. Um, you see a lot of bees out here, I'm noticing, and of course that's there a very is. important part of having an orchard. It is. We do have a lot of bees, um, but it's worked to our advantage. We do have 40 hi different hives out in our orchard, and we are then able to sell some of the honey in our store. Um, so we have a man that comes out and looks after the bees and takes it and makes honey for us. That's fantastic. So mm -hmm. along with the apples and all the great stuff that goes with apples, which we'll talk about in a second, mm -hmm. honey is also available in the store. Yes, we do. You've got some other great goods in the store too, mm -hmm. which focus largely on the local the local scene and lo local suppliers. Can you tell us some other stuff in, in there? Sure. Um, we have a great bakery, but on top of that we have a gift store. We like to carry a lot of local products, so from Ontario Ontario, um, places like Guelph and Huntsville, we have a Niagara on the Lake, we have a lot of great jams and jellies and chutneys that are available to the public. Um, and there's a lot of really great lines out there that people don't know a lot about and we like to support them. Uh, we also have our local baking. So we do it right here every day. We ha make everything from scratch. Um, all of our pies are made with frozen fresh berries and we make our pastry right in the store. Beautiful. No <laughs> preservatives, I'm told, too. So None. it's all just like mum would make. It's exactly right. Do you have a favorite in there? I, I understand you do a bit of baking once in a while here. I do, I do. Um, I think one of the biggest hits here are apple pies and our butter tarts, well, I have to say. That makes sense. <laughs> with so many great apples to choose from, there's a, a good reason to <laughs> try some apple pie and some tarts. Yes. Let's talk about the orchard itself. Sure. Um, it's, it's a pretty big area. You mentioned there are 26 different varieties of trees um, on 18 acres of orchard. So that's yes. a lot of orchard to manage. And I understand that you, you use IPM practices or integrated pest management practices. Yes, we use that. Um, we have an apple scout, which is a woman that comes into the orchard and monitors the bug traps that we have set up so that we can monitor the amount and the types of bugs that are in our orchard so we can cut down on spraying. We spray when we need to more and so we can cut down so we don't have to spray as much which Sorry. is good so it's a sort of more of a natural holistic <laughs> way of, of managing the orchard which yes. I'm sure is really important yeah we like to use the preventative measure rather than overspray um, so with the whole eat local movement obviously <laughs> more and more people are getting interested in where their food comes from and and being involved in where their food comes from this is obviously a great way to do that and to connect with the people who grow the food this is a family-run business I understand it is um, the family has been looking after the business for many years now um, the woman that started it still is involved heavily in the business likes to come out and bake uh, we have her son running the orchard now and her daughter looks after the bakery 
Wonderful. So <laughs> with a, a family oriented business like this, it's obviously a big attraction for families in the area. Um, do you see a lot of kids coming out to, to pick their own and how do they react to picking apples off the trees? Uh, we see a lot of children come out with their families. It's just a great time. They have a wonderful time running around the orchard, getting to pick apples with their family, spending time together. There's great picture opportunities, so don't forget your camera. Um, they just are excited about it. It's yeah. something new and it's something that a lot of children don't experience on a daily basis. Do you end up with a glut of apples at home? Do you end up with bushels in your in your kitchen? Oh, of course. <laughs> the beginning of apple season is my favorite. The fresh apple off the tree is the best. Um, as far as managing all of the apples you bring home, um, <laughs> do you have any tips for people who uh, need something to do with all their apples? What would you make with the ones that you bring home? Uh, I love to make apple pie and applesauce is one of my favorite things. There's nothing better than having homemade apple sauce or homemade apple pie. That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. um, there is cider and other apple products here available as well. So uh, aside from coming and getting the apples, there are other apple products, not just base baked goods, but mm -hmm. other great things you'd find in there as well. Yeah, we have fresh apple cider that is available during apple season. Um, we also have apple butter and products like that. Um, apple season runs from September until when? Um, we usually have apples in our store till about May. Uh, picking season usually ends around Thanksgiving. It just depends on our crop and depends on how many people are coming out to pick and enjoy so times. So even beyond the time when the apples are on the trees, they're available in storage here at Car Luke as mm -hmm. well. We have special cold storage that will keep the apples. Um, and then after that, there's special storage called CA, which is in controlled atmosphere. And apples can come out of there as well throughout the season. What would you say is one of the best advantages to coming out and picking your own apples as opposed to say going to the grocery store? I mean, buying local is a great thing, but there's something special about mm -hmm. taking it off the tree yourself. It just tastes better, I think. You know where it's coming from, you get the chance to pick it and it just tastes better. Um, it's great to support your local farmers, which is another big point towards that. Yeah. Um, and it's just a good time. It's a whole lot of fun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> For people who would maybe want more information about uh, mm -hmm. where to come and, and how to get involved and pick your own, where do they go online? Uh, they can go to www.carlicorchards.ca and there's lots of information about our apples, our different products within the store and other great things going on out here. It's a beautiful place and uh, I certainly look, look forward to uh, picking some apples myself. Thank you so much <laughs> for being welcome. with us this morning. Coming up after the break, we'll put some of those fresh apples to good use in the kitchen with Chef Rachel. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Tara at home where we're back in the kitchen with Chef Rachel. Hi Rachel. Hi Chris. We're going to put some of our fresh seasonal apples to great use this morning mm -hmm. and uh, make a really delicious apple treat. What are we creating today? Today we are going to be making apple turnovers. Oh yeah. Yeah so really delicious nice uh, treat for this time of year um, and not you know, not too hard to do, not very many ingredients. Um, you just want to focus on the apples in this case. So. Naturally. And if you've managed to go apple picking or perhaps you just hit the local market, apples are definitely widely available in buckets. So we need lots of great stuff to put them all to great use. And right. uh, turnover certainly sounds like a good plan to me. Right. So when you're making a turnover, you want to use a tart apple. So Granny Smith are perfect for this. That's what I have here. Okay. And I've just sliced them very thinly. Okay. In my pan here, I have some butter melting on high heat, about a tablespoon. Okay. So we're just going to put the apples in here and saute them uh, for about five to seven minutes until they get nice and soft. Okay. So we'll get these going. After a couple minutes, you know, we want to stir them every once in a while. 
We'll add in some sugar and a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. Okay. And then you want to take them out of the pan and let them cool before you actually use them for the turnover. Okay, that makes so, sense. We'll get these going, make sure that they're not sticking together here, and then we can roll out our pastry. All right. So once they once they're in there, uh, you can turn the heat down a little bit, maybe to medium. Oh, and it just smells let them amazing. Saute. Apples and butter, it's a dreamy combination. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. So we want to get those all covered in the butter. Now we can put them onto a medium heat and just let them sit. Okay. Uh, now for the pastry. This is just uh, store-bought puff pastry. Okay. Feel enough to it, you can make your own. <laughs> and uh, we need to grab a rolling pin for this. Okay. So you've just got a lightly floured surface mm -hmm. and your rolling pin, of course. Right. And so you don't have to be very precise with this, but you just want to roll it into a big square. We're going to cut this piece of pastry, once it's all rolled out, into four. And we can make uh, four turnovers with that. Now when you, you know, when you buy this in the grocery store, it usually comes with two different um, square chunks of pastry. So this recipe will do eight turnovers. Okay. Okay, so um, it takes a little bit of time to roll it out, but... Is there a specific uh, trick, any any helpful techniques that you've employed here? I know baking is one of your favorites. I do love baking, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, puff pastry is really easy to work with, as long as you have some flour and a good rolling pin. Um, it's quite it's quite simple, so... Um, you just want to get it into, you know, a, a nice big square. Depending on the size of your turnovers, you make mini turnovers, too. Right. And you can get um, more out of one piece of puff pastry, but that looks about good. Yeah. Okay, so our plastic knife here. We'll cut it into four squares and we're ready to go. Now I've made up a little mixture of egg wash, as I call it. So it's just a, a beaten egg and a little bit of water or milk and uh, that'll give the pastry a nice color when it goes in. Okay when it goes into the oven. I have the oven preheating at 425. Okay. So when these are ready to go in, we're gonna put them on a baking sheet with parchment paper for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I'll reduce the oven heat to 350, and then we'll let them cook for another 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. So. And generally, I mean, by the time everything goes into the oven, we're not really even cooking the apples anymore. It's just about baking that pastry perfectly because we're sort of pre-cooking the apples in the pan. Right. Okay. Yep. Just to get the, you know, get it to puff up, get the color on there. Uh, so when the apples are almost ready, you see that they're getting tender. They smell amazing. And now that they're starting to break down a little bit, you really smell that tart apple smell. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's perfect. So we want to add in some sugar. Just take away from that tart, because this is a dessert. And about a teaspoon of lemon juice. If you're trying to watch sugar content, Rachel, could you substitute in something like honey or agave nectar as well? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. For sure. You just want something to make it a little bit sweet and take away from that, that tart, right? So that's a great idea. Okay, so once the sugar and the lemon's in there and you mix it all up, that can come off the heat and you just want it to cool. I've already done this step because I want to show you how it goes into the pastry. Right, so we've got some already done here. They're right. nice and soft, they're cooled, and they're uh, looking beautiful. Nice Ready and to go uh, right in. sweet. Okay, so we'll use a little bit of this egg wash here. Now that's just a beaten egg with water, you said? Yes. Okay. You can use milk as well. Just put a little bit on there so it sticks. And then we can put a spoonful of our... I'm a little messy when I'm doing it. <laughs> it's more fun that way. Okay, a spoonful or a forkful <laughs> of our topping inside. And then we're just gonna fold each of these into in half, so in a triangle. And I'll show you how to make a nice um, design on it. These are gonna be big turnovers. They are, they look great. Okay, so, once you're at this stage, we'll just move these out of the way and do them after. 
You want to put a little bit of the mixture on the edge so it stays closed together. Ah, so you're kind of gluing the envelope closed. Yes. And then something else that will help with that as well is getting your fork and just pressing down on it. So it also makes a, you know, a nice design on there, but it helps keep it stuck together. Ah. There we go. Then you can also get a knife and make some slits in the top. And you'll be able to see that when it puffs up later. So there you go, ready for the oven. All right, once again, that oven is preheated to how hot? 425 right now. Okay. So these will go in there for about 20 minutes and then we'll reduce the heat. Okay. So right on our tray, ready Great. for the oven. So I'll fill the rest of these up and get them ready for the oven as well. Great, when we come back, we'll see them all finished, hot and ready to enjoy. Stay with us for more Tara at home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. When we first bought the house, the lawn was nothing but brown. So I called my father-in-law. You know, he's really good with the lawn. He knows exactly what to do. Well, I told him, you're Scott's turf builder. He said, well, I got this other stuff. And I told him, take it back to the store. Well, some brands have filler, like sand and gravel, stuff you don't want on your lawn. Scott's turf builder is pure food. Every granule is 100% nutrition. You get what you pay for every time. You see what happens, Tim, when you listen to your father-in-law? <laughs> All food, no filler. That's the Scots Advantage. Chef Rachel has put our fresh apples to some fabulous use in making beautiful apple turnovers. Rachel, they're out of the oven, they smell amazing, and they look fantastic. They do, don't they? Yeah, they turned out very well. Um, so we'll just recap on how we did this. Fairly simple to do uh, in a fry pan, just a little bit of butter, thinly sliced apples, some sugar, and lemon juice. Uh, we want to focus on the apples and not throw a whole lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, we rolled out our, our pastry dough. Uh, into four squares, put the filling inside, turned it over um, to make a nice triangle. Then we brushed the top with a little bit of egg wash, so one beaten egg and a little bit of milk or water in there. And look at the beautiful color that's resulted. It's yeah. so lovely. It's, it's wonderful. You really want to have that egg wash on there for that color or else it's just not quite the same. And then sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top. We just use regular granulated sugar, but um, it's also good if you use raw sugar as well. It's just a little uh, more coarse yeah. for the top. Um, yeah, so they're already in great served with um, maybe some French vanilla ice cream yes. or freshly whipped whipped cream. Absolutely. Yeah. Or um, I think what would be amazing would be a little bit of mascarpone cheese. Wonderful. Oh, so yeah. good. <laughs> so a great, a great fall snack. Of course, as always, you can find this in all of Chef Rachel's recipes online at terragreenhouses.com. We'll plate those up. Yeah, even wow. with some fresh fruit would be nice too for a nice presentation and some color. As we get out of September, uh, through September and into September, there's so much great fresh fruit uh, and fresh seasonal vegetables available. So we'll look forward to continually bringing you the best of what's available from farm to table right here on Terra at Home. Stay with us next week for more great ideas from the kitchen, the garden and beyond. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel.